What did you ask guys ask me? Is it 35? I don't know what the answer is. I, I just made up a random problem, to, and we'll see what we get. So my biggest concern is not necessarily the answer, but that you're doing the work the way I've asked you to. So you're replacing each variable with a parenthesis. You're plugging in the values, negative 3 for A, negative 5 for B, and then 4 for C, and then you're doing the problem. So there's nothing inside of a parenthesis we can do, is there? But the next thing, well, I guess the next thing to do would be exponents, wouldn't it? There are no exponents. So we do multiplication next. Negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15. And you know, as soon as I look at this, I just say positive. I know, I don't know how you want to look at it. That's negative 20, and then what's the opposite of negative 20? It's positive 20. Or if you want to say, what's the opposite of negative 5? Positive 5 times 4, it's positive 20. Um, there's two negatives, right? It, it has to be, when, when we multiply like that, it's going to be positive. So yeah, it's 35. Okay, so <coughs> we've talked about most of lesson 15. We've done all of this. We're going to go through it one more time. And this is actually the practice problems on page 70, but you can just kind of follow along and answer questions with me. So we're going to be finding surface area. So first of all, we have to have a three-dimensional figure in order to find the surface area. This is all in inches. So a, a figure that has three dimensions, this one has width, it has height, it has depth, doesn't it? And this is called a rectangular prism. You guys probably call it a box, right? Okay, so in math we call this a rectangular prism. Um, how many faces does it have? Six. Six. Six sides, six faces. And what we're going to do is we're going to just find the area of all six of them, and we're going to add them together, and that's going to be the surface area. Okay, the area of all six faces added together. So let's start, let's start with the front. Can you tell me the dimensions of the front? Yeah, yeah, four by two. And so that's eight square inches. What about, what about the back? Okay, same thing. Everyone understand that? Front and back, same size, same shape. Okay, so uh, top, what are its dimensions? Okay, three by four. So that's 12 uh, bottom. Okay, three by four. That's also 12. And then I guess we have we have a right side and we have a left side, don't we? Okay, so three by two? Three by two? Okay. Three by two, so six. Three by two, that's six. And if we add these up, uh, this gives me 20. And another 20, that's 40. And 12 more, that's 52. And remember, it's surface area, so it has to be square inches, doesn't it? So it's just simply the area of all the faces added together. That's surface area. <clears throat> now, there is another thing sometimes we talk about. We talk about lateral surface area. The lateral surface area would be these two and these two, but it wouldn't include the top and the bottom. So I'm just going to add these up. 8 and 6 is 14. Another 8 and 6, that's another 14. And 14 and 14 makes 28. So lateral surface area, it's the surface area of all the lateral faces. Sometimes we call them the sides. It doesn't include the top and the bottom. Okay, it doesn't include the top up here, doesn't include the bottom down here. 
And the reason we talk about lateral surface area a lot is a lot of times uh, that's all we need. Say for example, I'm going to, uh, this is a, a house or something. You can imagine the roof on it. If I'm going to paint it or put siding on it, I would need to know the lateral surface area. But I wouldn't need to know the total surface area. Because am I going to paint or put siding on the roof? Some of you don't look sure about that. Uh, I don't know where you live, so I want you to think harder this time. Uh, are you going to paint or put siding on the roof of your house? No. Are you going to dig underneath and put it on the bottom of your house? No. No, you're just going to put it on the lateral faces of the house. Okay, so lateral surface area um, is just the area of the lateral faces. Um, that'll be good for now. Okay, so now let's take a look at, rather than a rectangular prism, let's now take a look at a triangular prism. This one happens to have a right triangle right here. And then a matching right triangle there in the back. So two triangles and and what else we got here? What other shapes? Rectangles. rectangles. How many rectangles? Three. Yeah, there's three rectangles. Can you see all three? There's one on the bottom, there's one kind of in the back, and then there's this one on the side. Okay? On the front, top, I don't know what you want to call it. This again is in inches. <clears throat> so we're going to find the area of all of the faces and add them together. How many faces are there? Five. Yeah. Two triangles and three rectangles, right? So let's just start with the area of this triangle right here. How do we find the area of that triangle? Oh, good. You had me at half. Half the base times the height. Half of eight times six. Twenty-four square inches. What about that triangle in the back? Do you ever need to figure it out, or is it always going to be the same? Yeah, it's always going to be the same. If 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 those two triangles are not the same size and shape, then that's a lot more difficult problem. That's that's not something that we're going to do in this class. Okay. Uh, okay, now we got three rectangles. Let's start with the bottom. Can you guys see the bottom rectangle? What are its dimensions? Eight by twelve. Okay, eight by twelve. Good. What's eight times twelve? Ninety-six. Ninety-six. Uh, can you kind of see the back one back here? What are its dimensions? Twelve by twelve. Six by twelve. Mm, we, we're having some argument about it. Can, can we all agree that the three rectangles are all 12 units long? Yeah. Okay. And so what's the width then of this back rectangle? Is it six? Mm -hmm. Six, okay. Six times 12? Mm -hmm. And then the, the other rectangle, it's also 12 units long, isn't it? By how wide? How wide? Okay. So that's 120 square inches. We can add these up. Let's see, 10, there's 16, uh, there's 10, 12, 14, 21, 23. So 336 square inches and there's our surface area. We're not going to talk about lateral surface area in this case. We're just going to talk about the, the surface area of the whole thing. Okay. The last shape we, we talked about last week, and we've done this all at least once before, haven't we? Okay. The last shape was this circular cylinder. This one, uh, 
I don't know, let's, let's just say the height is 20 inches and the radius is, um, what does that look like? Maybe five inches? That's not the one out of the practice problems, is it? But this will work. What's that? Oh yeah, yeah. I understand. So she's she's talking about. Remember how we we drew this and we said, well, we have the circle on the top. What is the radius of the circle on the top? Five. Five. Okay. And then we have the circle on the bottom. Good. Knew what I was going to ask. Okay. And then remember how we cut this thing? Yeah. We cut it and we folded it out, didn't we? And we ended up with this rectangle. <clears throat> and how, how high would this rectangle be? 20. Yeah, 20. That would be the same as this. And then how long would the rectangle be? 10. Almost. 10 what? 10 times pi, good. 10 times pi. So that would be the circumference of our circle when we cut it and then fold it out flat, wouldn't it? And then we found the area of all three and we added them together. So let's just start with this part. 20 times 10 times pi. Good, 200 pi. This is what we call the lateral surface area. In this case, it's the lateral sides, isn't it? It's the sides that come up at a right angle from the base. Does it include the top and the bottom? No, no just the lateral surface area. That's it. Okay. What about the area of this circle? Come on, you know it. Good. 25 pi. What about the area of this circle? 25 pi. So the total surface area then would be 25 pi plus 25 pi plus 200 pi. 250 times pi square inches. Okay, so this is the lateral surface area. And then if you add them all together, that is the total surface area. Sometimes we need to know just the lateral surface area. Say this is a great big grain silo or something that we want to paint. Okay, it's got a lid on it. We're not going to paint the top of it necessarily. We're not going to tunnel underneath and paint underneath, are we? Okay, so we just need to know the lateral surface area. Now, there's a formula in your book for both of these. There's a formula in the back of the book. And <clears throat> you can do this using that formula. In fact, let's do the one... Let's do the one looks like this. This one has a radius of 20. Ooh, I have to write that small. Can you read it okay? And then 200. Now I want to make something clear here. The base. Riker? The base, is that Parker? Yeah. <laughs> it's the mask. <laughs> it's not that they're in different class periods. Uh, the bases are the two circles here on the ends. You know, if you take a can of pop and you tip it and you lay it on its side, does that change what the base is? No. No, the base is still the base, so it's still, it's still like that, okay? It doesn't matter if it's tipped over. So, uh, if you look in the very back of the book, very, very back cover, you can find the picture of a circular cylinder, and it gives you a formula for lateral surface area, 2 pi r h, and it gives you a, a formula for surface area. Surface area, 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. And you'll notice that these two parts are the same, aren't they? So this is just gives us the, the area of these side pieces if we cut it and then folded it out flat. And then this, pi r squared, isn't that the area of a circle? Area of a circle. And how many of them do we have? We have two. OK, 
Okay, so we can do the formula. So I'm going to do surface area formula. Okay, that look familiar? Is that what we've been talking about, right? This is why. Now we can go back and we can put the radius here. We can put the radius here and we can put the height right here. Now we can do our problem. Anything inside of a parenthesis we need to do? Okay, what about exponents? Exponents and roots. Okay, right here. Do not say 40. Okay, think about this. 20 times 20. 400. I'm just going to change that to 400. Okay. Now we can multiply. So it's okay. See how it's 2 times pi times 400? You don't have to do it in that order. What's 2 times 400? 800 times pi plus 2 times 20, 40, 40 times 200. Ooh, can you guys do that? 42 times 2. 4 times 2, 8, and then you got 1, 2, 3 zeros times pi. pi. Now, this is the lateral surface area. 8 thousand pi. 2 pi rh. That's it right there. If we add them together, and they are like terms, aren't they? So we can add them together. 8,800 times pi. This was in inches again. So square inches, that's the total surface area. So you know how to find the surface area of those three objects. You know the difference between surface area and lateral surface area. You're good to go. Let's do set number 15.